Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be giving a brutally honest review of an AliExpress dropshipping store from one of our wholesale TED subscribers. Lucas left a message on my previous store video review asking me to review his store and he asked me to be as honest as possible. So here's Lucas's store, Kitchen Platform. I had a lot of requests after that video for me to review people's stores, but Lucas stood out to me as I saw that he had successfully made at least one sale through his store. But as he said, he wasn't getting consistent sales. Now I think it's awesome Lucas that you've made a sale that shows that your store has potential. So let's talk about how we can make it even better. In this store review, I'm going to be looking at three major points of your store and I'm going to be quite blunt Lucas, so I hope you don't get offended. One, whether you have chosen good products for your store. Two, your strategy when advertising products on Facebook. Three, your store branding and design. And while watching, if you guys have any tips for Lucas yourselves, then be sure to leave them in the comment section below. All right, so let's get started. Aspect one, the products that you have chosen to sell. Choosing the right products when drop shipping is crucial. Why? Well, because it doesn't matter how great your store design looks or how much of an expert you are at Facebook ads. If you pick the wrong products, then your store is doomed to fail from the start. No one will buy them. There's no demand or desire for them. Now, obviously, though, Lucas has had some success here because he has made at least one sale in his store. So I'm going to switch over to my computer now and show you guys the types of products that he is selling. So as you guys can see, this here is his store kitchen platform. This store sells kitchen gadgets that are like kitchen hacks. They're designed to make cooking easier and faster. So let's switch over to his actual product page and see all the items that he's selling. Um, so immediately, Lucas, I want to congratulate you on adding 24 products to your store. You've taken my advice and you've added at least 20. And that's fantastic because it makes your store look like a real store. A lot of people just add a handful of products and it makes your store look very unprofessional and unfinished. So good job, you. So uh, scrolling down this page, you can see all the products that he's selling. They're just like little hack gadgets to make cooking easier. This avocado slicer makes it easier to open and scoop out avocados and this dumpling maker makes it easier to fold dumplings together into that iconic shape. Um, basically all these little gadgets here are designed to fix problems that people have while cooking. The truth though Lucas is that this trap can sometimes be a bit of a trap when it comes to selecting products and that is for three reasons. Reason one, it's often cheap junk that solves fake problems. So Lucas, I've got to be brutally honest with you. This anti-spill soup funnel that you're selling, yeah, it's a cheap piece of junk that solves a fake problem that almost no one has. See, there are two main types of products in this world that sell well. The first is a product that fixes a problem that someone has, i.e. it gets rid of a pain point. The second type of product is a luxury good. Instead of fixing a problem that someone has, it just adds a little bonus to their life. For example, take this cute little cat coffee spoon here. This is probably not going to solve any problems for them. Most people don't have a problem in their life that this little spoon solves. But people buy it because it makes their life a little bit better. It makes their life a little bit fun. They don't need it, but it's nice to have. Now, luxury goods like that spoon sell well, but the truth is, is that products that solve problems usually sell even better. That's because pain is arguably the biggest motivator for people. And that's why the kitchen gadget niche can look so appealing because all these little gadgets are designed to solve problems, right? Unfortunately, you've got to be very careful because the creators of these gadgets often invent fake problems so that they can sell them to merchants like you and me. The anti-spill soup funnel, this is exactly one of those fake problems. Have I ever tipped soup from a pot and had it spill? Definitely. Did it happen enough that I thought I needed to go buy a piece of plastic to fix the problem? No. Instead, I just got better at pouring the soup into my bowl. Most people have bought at least one useless item like this in their life and they quickly realize that all it does is fill their kitchen with junk. And so they vow to never buy any again. In fact, I'm going to switch back to my computer and show you all something. So I'm here on Amazon and I want to give you guys um, an actual good hack to see if supposed gadgets like the soup funnel that claim to solve a problem actually solve a real problem um, or if they're just fake news and nobody actually wants them. So if you're not sure, come to Amazon and do a search for the type of item that you're selling. In this case, I'm doing a search for the anti-spill pot funnel. And if we scroll down here, we can see that these soup funnels listed 
they don't even have any reviews, which means that no one is bothering to buy them, even on Amazon. Though if we do scroll down, you'll see that there is a type of pop funnel that is selling really well. It's these clip-on funnels that also act as strainers. Like not only is there lots of reviews and buyer activity for them, but we can see that the reviews are really positive. And so we know that this gadget is actually solving a problem that people are having. So no, Lucas, I don't think it would be a good idea to be actively marketing and selling the anti-spill soup funnel. But there is an item that you're selling in your store that does solve a genuine problem. And it is this vegetable slicer aid. So you can see here that Lucas has listed this product for sale in his store. Now this slicer aid is actually a perfect example of a product that would do quite badly as a photo based Facebook ad, but does great as a Facebook video ad. When you see photos of this, it just looks weird and uninspiring. But when you see it as an explainer video, it suddenly clicks and makes sense. People are like, Wow, wow, cutting onions and tomatoes are really annoying. And this inconspicuous, weird looking gadget solves this really frustrating process I encounter regularly. Yes, yes, take my money. So that's the first reason that this niche can be a bit of a trap. And the second reason is, reason two, there is no one to target your Facebook ads to. A lot of the products in this niche are by nature quite generic. They may solve a genuine problem, but it's difficult to use the Facebook targeting system to actually locate the people that are suffering from the problem. Like this one. Uh, take this other product that you're selling, Lucas, this novelty microwave cleaner. Um, now let's think about this for a moment. If you're gonna create a Facebook ad to promote this little gadget thing, uh, how would you do that? Just imagine that you've gone to Facebook to create the ad for the product and you've come to select targeting. What two overlapping interests would you select? Seriously, where is the fan club for angry, cheap looking dolls? Like I'll take this point back if someone can find one for me, but I suspect that I'm not going to lose that bet. I don't even want to think about how you would sell this thing on Facebook. In fact, you know it's a bad product when a YouTuber with nearly 5 million subscribers attempted to sell this thing and failed. Yes, YouTuber Chloe Couture attempted to sell this on her Facebook fan page. Let's try it. Now, not only did she fail to sell this, but as you can see in the video comment section, this product also suffers from the first problem of being a useless piece of junk. A bowl of lemon works better. You can do the same thing with a sponge. And you know, I have to agree, I think it's very clear that I'm not impressed with this thing and when I saw it, I thought, why would anyone want to buy that? But the truth though, Lucas, is that you do have an item in your store that does have a very large fan base. And that is this avocado three in one slicer. If this was the product that had made a sale for you, then I wouldn't be surprised because this thing actually sells really well. Not only does this gadget take advantage of the massive ongoing avocado craze that seems to have no end, but it's genuinely really helpful. Switching back to Amazon, we can do a search for products that are like this. And as you can see, there is a really popular tool just like it, the OXO avocado slicer. And like pretty much all items in the kitchen gadget niche, you need to be prepared to be running Facebook ads for it. That's because when you see photos for this weird little gadget here, you're like, oh, that looks a bit strange and it's difficult to figure out what on earth it's supposed to do. But that weird design works to your advantage in a video explainer ad. Once shown in video form, it quickly becomes apparent that it's better to use this than a knife and spoon. And so now suddenly this weird looking gadget is solving problems that you're having with your favorite fruit, avocados. Awesome. And as people are saying in the video comment section, shut up and take my money. And finally, there is a third reason, Lucas, why I would avoid actively promoting and selling some of the items in your store. Reason three, they are easily available in local stores. Now there is a good chance that you may be able to find a three-in-one avocado tool like this at your local home and living store, but it's not something that people commonly see or know about. Unfortunately, Lucas, the truth is, is that there are some products in your store that I would basically classify as common goods. Let me switch back to my computer and I'll show you one of them. So this is an example of one, the pineapple cora. Unfortunately, Lucas, the truth is, is that this is really, really common. In fact, it's so common that it's often found in the supermarket next to the pineapples. Remember, the key is to be looking for unique, quirky items that people can't just find easily and cheaply at their local mall. You want to find items that people are unlikely to have seen before. All right, so I hope that those tips have helped you, Lucas, when selecting the right products. Let's move on to the next part of the store view. Aspect 2, your Facebook ad strategies. 
So I tried to find your Facebook fan page for your store, but I couldn't, so I can't analyze it deeply. But I did notice a couple of things in your store that were concerning. The first thing that concerned me, Lucas, was how low you had priced your items for. You see, normally I recommend that you price an item for three times the price that you paid for it, including the shipping, and ideally try and price it for closer to four times. Why? Well, it's so that you can have a reasonable profit margin of between 30 to 15% after you've paid for your expenses. So let's say that you're selling this cat spoon and it costs you $2 to buy the item and $1 to ship it. That means that it costs you $3 to buy it. I would recommend that you price it for about $9. The reason for that is because of the fact that usually when it comes to winning AliExpress items, half of the revenue goes towards the Facebook ads. So let's take our cat spoon here. Now we're selling this for $9 and half of our revenue is going towards the Facebook ad. That leaves us with $4.50 and it costs us $3 to buy this, which leaves us with $1.50 for our profit. If we priced this spoon too low, then we wouldn't have been making a profit for it after we paid for the item and for our Facebook ads. So then we switch back to my computer and we're gonna take a look at your pricing strategy for this Vegetable Slicer Aid. So here is the listing for the Vegetable Slicer Aid in your store. You're selling it for $6. If we switch over to AliExpress, we can see that it's selling for 91 cents. And if we scroll down, we can see that e-packet shipping is $1.84 to the USA. That means that this item is selling for $2.75. So like, let's think about it, if half of the revenue is going towards the ad, if we minus the cost of buying the tool itself, that means that we're just left with 25 cents in profit. At this point, Lucas, you're pretty much selling this item at cost, and you don't need to be. I recommend going through all the items in your store and making sure that they're priced high enough to be making a profit. Something else that I also want to emphasize again, because it's very important, is that if you want to be in the kitchen gadget niche, you need to be prepared to run Facebook video ads. Again, if you see a picture of this little vegetable slicer, it looks kind of weird and useless. Like, why would I want to buy that? But when you see it in action form, you realize that it's actually genuinely helpful and solves a real problem that lots of people have. But switching back to your product page, I can't see an explainer video on here. All I see are pictures, and I'm assuming that if you were advertising this product on Facebook and you had a video, you'd upload it to the product page as well. But if I switch over to the Avocado 3-in-1 tool, I can see that you've used a video on that page, um, and that makes me think that you're probably using this as part of your ad on Facebook, which is great. What I would suggest you do, Lucas, is that you go to Facebook and you research the different video ads that people have posted on there and take a look at the most successful ones. Find the ones that are performing the best and use them as inspiration to make your own video. All right, I've just got one final aspect to talk about when it comes to your store. Aspect three, your store design and branding. All right, I'm just gonna be giving you some quick tips here. So let me switch back to your store. Okay, so starting out here on the homepage, I can see that you've gone with a nice, simple, clean design, and that's awesome. I'm really glad that you didn't spend ages and ages and lots of money trying to create something really fancy because as you've seen, that is not required to make sales. Something though about the store is that it doesn't really feel like it has a brand or a purpose at all. And I think the tagline that you've used here is really indicative of that. The store is selling kitchen hacks that are designed to solve annoying problems when cooking and to make the whole process faster and easier. Yet your tagline doesn't talk about that at all. Instead, it talks about how you're here to help people design a kitchen in their own way. Like that has nothing to do with what you're selling. Start thinking about how you can change the language on the site to not only reflect what you're selling, but to make it look like that you're passionate about selling it as well. And if we come over here to products, I'm just gonna open up a product page again so that we can take a look at your product descriptions. Now, a lot of people get lazy at this point, but you've gone ahead and created simple, unique product descriptions and not just pulled the product data from AliExpress. Thank you, that's really, really good. And you've taken my advice of noting how this avocado tool solves problems. No more dangerous stabbing or losing fruit. Most people just list features, like saying that it has a plastic blade, but they don't make that connection that you have of what that plastic blade means, i.e. that it's safer and easier and like less dangerous than a usual knife and spoon. So that's really awesome. Good job. 
I can also see that you've added in trust badges here, which is really good. Um, they're placed a bit awkwardly though. I recommend aligning them to the left. The text is aligned to the left and the buy button is as well. So it would look more professional if they were all lined up correctly. And you should also make sure the spacing is the same. Like right now there is a tiny bit of spacing between the badges and the buy button, but lots of spacing between the badges and the text. So just make it even. I also recommend that you get rid of any low quality images in your product listing that look pixelated like this one here does. Like make sure to find the HD image file of any pictures that you want to use. You can often find it just by doing a Google image search for the title of the AliExpress item that you're looking to resell. So for example, let's say I wanted to find the big original image file of this picture of an item I found on AliExpress. I'd copy the name for the AliExpress listing, then I'd go to Google Images and I'd paste it in and do a search for it. And as you can see, we found the original photo image for it here. And finally, I recommend that you go ahead and add a favicon to your store. Like a great image for that would be your logo image. So take this and turn it into a favicon. All right, so those were just some quick tips that you can action today, Lucas, to make your store branding and message even stronger. I hope that you appreciated this honest store review, Lucas, and that you didn't get offended. There are still several other things that you can do to improve your store. So if you guys watching have any advice for Lucas, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. But as always, thanks for watching everyone. And if you would like to get even more videos about making money selling online, then be sure to subscribe to Wholesale Ted and click that little notification bell next to it so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. And did you know that we here at Wholesale Ted have a premium over the shoulder training course called the Dropship Club? It takes you through the process of creating a dropshipping store from start to finish. And it is perfect for beginners. If you would like to join that, then simply click on the link in the video description below. And before you run off, I've got one last freebie I'd like to give you. Here at Wholesale Ted, we have a free ebook that teaches you the six steps that six figure dropshipping stores follow to make over $10,000 every month. To get that for yourself, simply click on the link in the video description below.